Welcome to the news on Zodiac. You're with me, Robert Karua. Let's have a look at more. Please do stick around. We start with news that Mozambican food industry players are seeking to expand their exports to Malawi and neighboring countries while fostering business uh, to business connections. A Keno, uh, Keno Foods, a meat processor, and a Chico Fish Farms are among business players planning to increase exports and partner with local businesses in Malawi to establish chain stores. Mozambican envoy to Malawi. Um, Alexandra Manjete believes such moves would help in uh, promoting regional integration for economic growth. Alex Banda sent us this report from Mozambique. The Malawian business journalists toured Kano Foods, which slaughters and processes meat to people and companies in Tete and other provinces in Mozambique. According to Domingo Villa, commercial director for Kano Foods, this public-private partnership venture feeds several provinces in Mozambique and plans to expand the business to Malawi, Zambia and Zimbabwe. The next stop was Chigoa Fish Farm in Kahorabasa. The farm breeds and grows fish in floating cages. Chigoa Fish Farm's project engineer, Maxas Nwonga, says they want to increase their 20% fish exports to Malawi and her neighbors. Yes, we are planning to increase our export market. I think the biggest thing that we are currently working on is uh, construction of our processing fa facility. And this will allow us to be able to process uh, fish directly of, or on the farm and be able to supply different uh, processed fish to the export market. As we know, I think some of the export markets, uh, it's more valuable to send uh, fully processed fish uh, fillet uh, all around gutted as well as frozen fish across the across the country. Area, Mozambican envoy to Malawi, Alexandra Manjate, implored the Malawi business community to explore business to business ventures in Mozambique. If we can work together on that, you show the people what's in the field. You'll be going to Beira, you'll be going to Nakala. Show them the reality. Next time, let's bring them the importers, the business community, to see it and use it. If there is a challenge, let's sit together and try to solve that challenge. Mozambique is key to land-linked countries through ports of Nakala and Baila in the spirit of promoting regional integration through trade. For Zodiac in Tete province in Mozambique, this is our expander. The World Food Programme has warned the hunger situation in the country may reach unprecedented levels due to inadequate funding as donors find it hard to raise funds. WFP Malawi representative Simon Dane here says the organization has collected only 20% of 701 billion kwacha needed to feed 27 million people facing hunger in Southern Africa, 5.7 million of which are Malawians. We have a report by Western Good. The World Food Programme, WFP, says it has collected only 20% of funds needed to assist several countries, including Malawi, Zimbabwe and Zambia, that were affected by El Nino-induced drought. Its country representative, Simon De Nere, says traditional donors have decided to cut budgets due to challenges in their country global economic challenges and the wars in Israel and Ukraine. Denere adds that as almost six million Political experts have backed the decision by delegates at the just-ended MCP convention to allow party president and the National Executive Committee to fill remaining positions which the delegates failed to elect during the endeavor. However, the experts, Dr. Boniface Durani and um, Nadine Patel in separate interviews say they expect those in, entrusted to fill in the position to ensure inclusivity and that uh, groups such as women and the youth are well represented. Kasima Obi has more.
Malawi Congress Party has become the first major political party in Malawi to hold an elective convention ahead of the 2025 tripartite elections and the interval has seen the party ushering in a new national executive committee. However, delegates only voted for holders of 20 key positions including the first deputy president, secretary general and directors of various sections with an agreement that the president and the NEC will be allowed to fill in the remaining positions by 31st of this month. Political expert Nadine Patel supports the resolution by the delegates hoping it will help to ensure that all groups of people are well represented. I think that's a valid reason and that the time should be given. I do not see that as a, as a particularly a problematic issue. The fact that the elections have taken place for all the key positions is good enough to have happened at a convention. On his part, another expert, Dr. Boniface Dulani, says much as it would have been good if the delegates had filled all the positions at the convention, he too hopes that those entrusted to fill in the positions will consider fair distribution of the positions. And, and if one looks at that closely, you would also agree that the, the top leadership of the MCP leader is quite heavy in terms of uh, being dominated by one particular region. So if they have to maintain a semblance of regional balance, I think it is important that they also bring in people from other regions and incorporate them into the leadership of the party. But more importantly, I think it's the issue of women representation as well as the youth. During the elective convention, the delegates also resolved that President Lazarus Chakwera should represent MCP during the next year's general elections. For Zodiac in Irirongwe, this is Kasim Aubi reporting. Well, the MCP held its elective uh, conference from the 8th to 10th August 2024, making it the first political party to hold the elective Indaba ahead of the 2025 polls. Political analysts have uh, uh, rated highly the Malawi Congress Party MCP for organizing a peaceful conference, saying this sets the pace for the next year's tripartite elections. Franklin Mtambali has more. Political analyst Dr. Boniface Dulani says the conduct of the Malawi Congress Party elective conference has sent a strong message on how political parties should elect leaders and amicably resolve intra-party wrangles when misunderstandings arise. Dr. Dulani's concern, however, hinges on the source of funding as the MCP failed to come out clear despite highlighting that the resources used were not public funds. We know that party conventions in the recent past have been characterized by a lot of disagreements that sometimes have turned violent, but this has not been the case here. I think I was particularly you know, impressed that there was no contestation over the delegates. So I think these are some of the aspects that the MCP has done well. A political commentator, Wanda from Kuche, shares the views and urges other political parties to draw lessons from the MCP convention. There was also the issue of uh, some contestants trying to buy delegates, but at the end of the day, some of those were not uh, elected in, into office. And uh, that is a lesson to all those who are contesting at the conventions in the other parties, that you cannot buy a political position. Uh, what you simply have to do is to package your message. MCP held its elective conference from the 8th to 10th August, making it the first political party to hold the elective Indaba ahead of the 2025 polls. Experts in the construction industry have agreed to force the mindset change and fight corruption to ensure that they deliver quality and resilience infrastructure in Malawi. In a, a communique issued at the end of the 7th International Construction Conference in Mangochi, members agreed that everyone have a role to play for the country to have quality and resilience infrastructure, but should start with mindset change and saying uh, no to corruption. Prof. Mlozo has more. Following three day discussions during the 7th International Construction Conference in Mangoj on Friday, Golos in the construction industry agreed on several points that they have to work on to improve service delivery, 
members emphasized on delivering quality and a resilient infrastructure as all oh, what people expect mindset change and avoiding corruption let's look at how the malawi quite is faring against major currencies in the world according to the reserve bank of malawi we'll bring you that uh, update later on in the news you're watching the news on zodiac and this afternoon you're with me robert karua let's uh, take a short break and we'll be back Life moves fast, and so should your packages. Welcome back. Let's have a look at the headlines as we continue. Technology must is celebrating 10 years of existence. It has unveiled plans to come up with uh, city campuses to bring education closer to more, uh, to more people. Must Vice Chancellor Professor Adres Malata told journalists in Blanta, the first city campus will likely be an opened at the Malawi Post Corporation MPC Training College at Chichiri, which the university is now renting. Christopher Sunday has more. Malawi University of Science and Technology must says the university is now ready to expand. Must Vice Chancellor Professor Address Malata says a decision has been made to make sure that the university has some campuses in Blantyre, Nzuzu, Lirongwe and the Eastern Region. She says they are likely to have a new campus in Blantyre in January 2025. As you know that the Ndara campus of MAST is in Choro. Our institution is now growing. Student population, programs. And so we realize now that with the current infrastructure at MAST, we cannot expand anymore. But also the convenience of having a campus in town. Because we have students that perhaps want to be working and then they should also be studying. So we realized that we needed a very good campus. This institution initially was a static training institution. So when you look at the way it was built, it has got all facilities, very good classrooms. Malai Post Corporation Postmaster General Angel Banda said they have decided to rent out their infrastructure as part of a turnaround strategy. And we've been looking at how best we can utilize the property. Of course, apart from operating our mail services, our courier services, and we decided as an organization that we can complement our revenues through renting out some of the properties that we are not making use of currently. So this is very crucial for us. It complements our revenues, but also going into a partnership with a university like MAST is also quite uh, something that is very crucial for us as well. Exporting for Zodiac, this is Christopher Sandy. The World Life and Environmental Society of Malawi, Wesson, says water challenges continue to haunt people in areas around the Kodawata Wildlife Reserve uh, in Kodawata District, a situation which puts them at risk of waterborne diseases. Wesson Duanga branch manager uh, Yasin Rashid. Uh, Marandula says construction of a wire fence around the reserve left uh, left the people who were depending on water resources inside the reserves without access to clean water. Winston Gaimia has more. There are challenges on access to clean water in areas surrounding the wildlife reserve, a situation which puts some communities at the risk of waterborne disease outbreaks. This has prompted the World Life and Environmental Society of Malawi to do. And uh, in sports, the Bodybuilding and Fitness Association of Malawi has announced that it will hold this year's uh, Malawi Bodybuilding Championship in December after a two-year break. 
BFAM General Secretary Aaron Simaka has confirmed to Zodiac that uh, the, that the tone will be unique as it will also accommodate women for the first time since the sport was introduced in the country. Simaka added that athletes have already started registering for the championship. Explain. Mr. Malawi is scheduled on, on the 1st December this year, 2024. I want to have a good competition and good event that maybe it can bring together all athletes from all over Malawi. So far, we are challenge on the sponsorship. And finally, in other news, Paul Kagame has been sworn in for the fourth term as Rwanda's president after winning 99% of the vote in the last month's election. While some hail Mr. Kagame for bringing peace and stability to his country after the 1994 genocide, others accuse him of running a, 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 a repressive regime uh, in a country where ordinary people are afraid to openly criticize him. Rights groups say the margin of his electoral victory is proof of the lack of democracy in Rwanda. Only two candidates were allowed to stand against Mr. Kagame in the 15th July election. In his four presidential election, he has always gained at least 93% of the vote. And that's about what we have time for in this edition of